the what, the how, and the when. All about compression coming up. Hey peeps, my name is Bhuvan from Suntide and welcome back to my channel. Here you'll find videos and tutorials on music production, sound and bass design, drum programming and occasional gear reviews so that you can also grow in your musical journey. Like anything in this universe, we are also faced with three main questions about compression. What, how and when. In this video, I'll be answering all of these so that you can get right into using it in your way. So let's jump in. Alright peeps, so let's start off with the what. In simple words, compression evens out the dynamic range between the loudest and the quietest parts of an audio signal by either cutting or boosting respectively. An aggressive compression will make the audio signal bouncy or thumpy and you might experience something called as ducking. While on the other hand, a softer or a subtle compression will bring the much more uniformity and evenness across the audio signal and will add some character and color. Now let's understand the various parameters of a compressor, starting off with the threshold. Threshold defines at what level the compressor kicks in. Anything which is above the threshold, the compressor will turn on. Reduce the threshold and you'll achieve an aggressive compression. Increase the threshold and you'll get much more subtle compression. The ratio defines how much the volume will be reduced. For example, if I have a ratio set to 5 is to 1, that means for every dB that I go above the threshold, there would be a reduction of 1 fifth, which is 20%. Knee defines how soft or hard the compressor will sound. If you increase the knee, you will achieve much more subtle compression because it's a soft knee. If you decrease the knee, you will achieve in a much more aggressive compression. Attack time defines how fast or slow the compressor would kick in. If you're gunning for an instrument to sound a little bit exciting, increase the attack time. If you're gunning for an instrument to sound heavy and much more controlled, reduce the attack time. Release time will define how long the compressor would take to completely disengage. If you want to breathe in some life into your instruments, increase the release time. During the process of compression, you will experience a loss in gain. Hence, makeup gain helps in compensating for the loss in volume due to compression. Now, there are various other parameters of a compressor and it totally depends upon what compressor you use. Input gain and output gain defines how high or low the signal is coming in and going out. Over here, we have an inbuilt distortion which has soft, hard and clip distortion modes. You also have a limiter and an auto gain which you can use to reduce or increase the gain and you have a mix knob which defines how dry or wet the signal should be now let's address the how here i have an audio signal of a piano chord progression with different transients which are the first touch point of a waveform and let's hear it without the compressor Nice. To start off, let's put the ratio at 3 is to 1. And now let's aim at reducing close to about 5 dB in the meter. So the threshold is minus 21 dB. Let's aim for a softer knee because we want it to have a much more subtle compression. Now we are aiming at engaging the compressor instantaneously at the transients. So let's have a shorter attack. Let's say 5 millisecond or let's say 10 milliseconds. And to bring in that life, let's increase the release to let's say about 600 milliseconds so that it slowly and gradually disengages. Now we have reduced the gain quite a bit, so let's make up for it with the makeup gain. 
not a lot just 2 dbs up let's also try adding in some soft distortion now it has increased gain quite a bit so let's reduce the makeup gain to compensate for the increase perfect that's good let's hear it before and after so you can see how it brings that color and gives that character to the audio signal which brings me to when to use a compressor now in theory you can use compressor almost in every instrument but the truth of the matter remains that it can go sideways very fast it can increase the overall gain of the signal in your mix to a point that it's difficult to control or it can reduce the gain and make your mix sound lifeless and as if you have lost hearing So when to use a compressor well a simple answer is just go with what your ear tells you if your audio signals are all over the place and the dynamic ranges and the transients vary a lot use a compressor to even out if you have a kick drum and you want that punchiness use a compressor if you have recordings which are lifeless and need that air to breathe use a compressor but it all boils down to how your audio signal looks like if you have a pretty balanced and even audio signal you really don't need a compressor just a simple eq will do the job think of it in this way compressor is just like your best friend it helps you cheer up when you're feeling down and low but also tells you to calm down when you're going bonkers okay okay guys that about wraps it up for this video i hope you learned something from this if you did let me know so that i can bring out much more content like this as always if you like this video consider subscribing give me a thumbs up turn on that bell notification so that you can stay updated if you have any questions Let me know in the comments down below and I'll be happy to get back to you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.